The stars have finally aligned. It's time again for yet another setup revamp and for a new set of speakers. I recently went back to a smaller gaming monitor with the U Spectrum, which by the way, you can watch here. And with that, I now have an ample amount of space to correct the placement of my speakers from being mounted to the wall down to my desk in the proper height and angle. And like I alluded to earlier, I will also take this as an opportunity to upgrade my speakers. So in today's video, I share with you a dedicated comparison between my old Audio Engine HD3 and the speaker that I'm going to replace it with, the Audio Engine HD6. And to top it all off, I'm also going to throw in a quick comparison of both of them partnered with the Audio Engine SH subwoofer. And at the end, I'll provide you with a proper recommendation on which one should choose. With that said, let's get into it. As always, honest disclaimer, all of the speakers that I will feature here are generously provided by Digital Walker, but they did not give me any monetary compensation. I'm always transparent with you about that. Now, two years ago, I also made a pretty similar video comparing the Audio Engine A2 Plus with the HD3 that includes an unboxing of those speakers as well, which you can watch here by using the links below. With that out of the way, let's start with a quick unboxing experience of the Audio Engine HD6 and then we'll compare it side by side with the HD3. If you want to skip the unboxing, I included some timestamps below for you. The Audio Engine HD6 came in a huge and heavy box which gave me an idea of how massive the difference is in terms of size and weight compared to the HD3. Upon opening the box, the speakers are nicely protected by a couple of thick styrofoam and the speakers themselves are also extra protected by a very soft velvet cloth. Lifting the speakers out of the box requires a lot of effort as they are really massive and hefty. Aside from the speakers, inside the box, we also have a premium remote control made out of brushed aluminum. We also have the external antenna, a warranty and support guide, the quick start guide, and a couple of pouches that houses the cables. We have a 16 AWG speaker wire, a mini jack audio cable, an RCA audio cable, and a power cable. As you can tell, the unboxing experience is really nice considering this audio engine's flagship speaker. The speaker unit is well protected not only by soft velvet fabric but also by another thin layer of foam cover. The first time I saw this in person, my first impression was, holy crap, this is massive. And I was actually afraid that it will not fit the space on my desk. More on that later. But yeah, AirPods Pro for scale. It measures around 7.25 inch tall, 11.75 inch wide, and 10 inch deep, with a hefty weight of 8 kilograms for the active left side with all of its ports and huge heatsink, and around 5.5 kilograms for the passive right side with only a couple of speaker ports. These are made out of thick 18 millimeter high resin MDF, with real wood veneer and are available in three different colors including black, walnut, and high gloss white like what we have here. Aside from the physical attributes, it is a powered speaker with dual mode connectivity featuring Bluetooth APTX HD. I'll pop the key specifications on the screen so that you can check it out. Alright, so let's take a look around before we compare this with the smaller Audio Engine HD3. In front of the left speaker unit, we have the 5.5 inch aramid fiber woofers and the 1 inch silk dome tweeters. We also have the LED indicator with an IR receiver beside it and the volume knob all in a brushed aluminum accent lining. I wish it has a headphone jack though, like the HD3 and has a volume indicator. The volume knob here rotates infinitely which doesn't make sense functionality wise. Looking at the back, we have all the main input and output ports. We have the massive heatsink, the Bluetooth antenna, a pairing button, a stereo mini jack input port, optical input, Stereo RCA input and output ports, a speaker output port for the right passive speaker, the power switch, a voltage switch, a fuse, and the AC power port. As for the right speaker unit, we essentially have the same design, just without the volume knob and LED indicator in front, and just the speaker ports at the back since this one is passive. We also have an optional cover here with strong magnets to keep them in place. Overall, the design and construction of the Audio Engine HD6 speak volumes when it comes to top of the line quality. This is easily the most premium speaker I've ever had, which it should because this mammoth right here is not cheap for around 35,000 Philippine pesos. With that said, I can probably say the same about the quality of its smaller and more affordable brother, the Audio Engine HD3, which I've been using for a couple of years now. Looking at them side by side, as you can tell, the difference in terms of size is absolutely massive. But you'll be surprised later how the Audio Engine HD3 is able to stand against the HD6 in terms of sound quality. We'll get to that later. But first, let's take a look around. 
In front, the clear winner here is the Audio Engine HD3 with the conveniently placed pairing button, a headphone jack, and a volume knob that also doubles as a power button. This makes the Audio Engine HD3 desktop friendly compared to the Audio Engine HD6 which is more targeted towards a home theater or a living room setup. Essentially, it is a setup and forget type of speaker, especially with the remote. The Audio Engine HD3 features a smaller 2.75 inch RMB fiber woofers and 0.75 inch silk dome tweeters. At the back, both feature an external Bluetooth antenna, RCA input in output ports, a stereo mini jack input port, and output ports to the right passive speaker. The Audio Engine HD3 has a micro USB input port but doesn't have an optical input port. It also has a dedicated base switch which the Audio Engine HD6 doesn't have. So yeah, overall, input and output ports wise, they share almost all the essential ones, with the Audio Engine HD6 having an optical input port for home theater and living room type of setup, and the Audio Engine HD3 having a micro USB input for connecting to a PC. By the way, while we're at it, here's a quick view of the Audio Engine HD6 besides the Audio Engine S8 subwoofer, also in high gloss white finish. I'm also planning on releasing a dedicated unboxing and sound test for the S8, so make sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. Alright, so with the side-by-side -side comparison out of the way, let's finally do a proper sound comparison between the Audio Engine HD3 and the Audio Engine HD6. Like I said earlier, I've already done this before with the Audio Engine A2 Plus and the Audio Engine HD3. And while I'm extremely grateful that a lot of you appreciated that comparison video, I also admit that my methodology back then wasn't really ideal and I give you my sincere gratitude for sharing your constructive criticisms. So instead of just volume matching both speakers, which is what I did in the past, I now use a decibel meter to match the sound level of both speakers to around 74 decibels, which if I'm not mistaken, is around the safe level for music listening. I also properly set the gain on my microphone, which is the Zoom H1N, so that I won't have to touch the audio later in post-processing. I also place the microphone just around the area where I'm usually sitting. Last but not the least, instead of playing any music, I pick the top 5 most popular genre of pop, hip-hop, EDM, rock, and R&B, and luckily one of my favorite no copyright artists, Nafex, has them all. Alright, enough yapping about my methodology that still might not be perfect, but yeah, let's listen to side-by-side -side comparison between the Audio Engine HD3 and the Audio Engine HD6.
while the demons cry, yeah, we were built to thrive, yeah. I think that we've all had enough. What keeps you up at night, yeah? Make all the demons cry, yeah, we were built to thrive, yeah. And for some kicks and giggles, here's a quick sound comparison with the Audio Engine S8 subwoofer. I like to be educated, but I'm so frustrated. Hello to my loneliness. I guess the ignorance is bliss. Take me back to be part of the new. Rewind, take it out of cue. And this sense can be a young man's game. Stand up for the heart of shame. Again, if you're interested in a longer sound test for the Audio Engine SH subwoofer, make sure to subscribe. Now, before we move on, I just want to share with you that I partnered with Quench Philippines, which is a local brand here in the Philippines, to promote their new tumblers. I've been using this for the past few weeks now, and the quality of the materials used is very good, and it can hold up the temperature really well. This is also very affordable and comes in different colors and sizes, and I'll put some links below if you're interested. So if you want to support me, support the channel, and get a pretty good tumbler, check the links below. Thank you guys. Alright, let me know all your thoughts in the comment section. Even though this is not a perfect avenue for this kind of sound test comparison with YouTube compression and your own listening device as a potential limitation, I hope that I was still able to provide you with enough detail to make a proper informed decision should you choose to consider any of these speakers. Now to be honest, I'm not an audiophile, so I won't pretend I know a lot of things when it comes to small intricate details. But as a regular consumer, I feel like the Audio Engine HD3 is a more forward sounding speaker with a sound signature that leans more towards the brighter side with enough kick on the low end even without a subwoofer. And it's just a fun and engaging speaker to listen with. The Audio Engine HD6 on the other hand provides a laid back, warmer sound signature with a deeper low end and an overall wider sound stage. Honestly, even if I keep my Audio Engine HD3, I will still be more than happy about its sound quality, especially considering the price difference. But having the Audio Engine HD6 just really provides that top of the line experience, especially when partnered with the Audio Engine S8 subwoofer. And as you can tell, it perfectly matches my new desk setup. Ultimately, these premium speakers are not for everyone. I'm just sharing with you my own experience of being able to try both of them side by side. Audio Engine speakers have their own target market space and there are a lot more affordable alternatives out in the market. At the end of the day, all I can say is that if you have the budget, you can never go wrong with these Audio Engine speakers. Yes, they are a bit pricey than most of us can afford, but what you're getting here is an absolute premium quality speaker in terms of design, construction, features, and most importantly, sound quality. As for my recommendation, for desktop use, I can still recommend the Audio Engine HD3 unless you really like the bigger design and form factor of the Audio Engine HD6. Honestly, I think the Audio Engine HD6 is more suitable for a living room or a larger room setup to get the most out of it. In a bigger room with you farther away from it, you can push the volume louder for a fuller sound without being uncomfortable. I will still keep my Audio Engine HD6 though as my desktop speaker because I really like how it looks and how it sounds and I can also use it to blast music to the entire studio whenever I'm shooting b-rolls and stuff. And again, like I said earlier, it looks absolutely perfect on my new desk setup. I will now move my Audio Engine HD3 to our bedroom to partner with my LG C2 OLED TV. And if I can only choose one here to recommend, I'll choose the Audio Engine HD3 because of the amount of value you're getting for its price. Speaking of my new desk setup, I know some of you are going to ask about it. The custom speaker stand that I have here is from Iron Meets Wood and is made out of solid mahogany and birch wood with the birch wood painted with black for a nicely appreciated contrast. You can have yours tailor-made to your speaker size and you can also choose from a variety of wood combinations. By the way, for my budget-minded viewers, watch out for my review of the Creative Pebble V3 desktop speakers. 
And there you have it guys. Thank you for watching. Again, this video is not paid, but Digital Walker and Iron Miss Wood did provide the speakers and speaker stand for me to use on my setup revamp project. I'll put some links below including some promo codes if there are any so that you can check them out. Again, if you want to watch my comparison video between the Audio Engine A2 Plus and the Audio Engine HD3, click this. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you appreciate this video and see you next time. Have a great day guys. You're awesome.